Welcome to the Post Workshop, where we produce free tutorials to help strengthen your film and video post-production skills. To support this channel, please consider subscribing and press the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published. I am very glad you decided to join us because this tutorial is all about storyboard editing with Avid Media Composer. If you are not familiar with the term, storyboard editing is a highly visual approach to film and video editing. It allows you to lay out frames across a canvas that represent the shots of a sequence, quickly rearrange those frames to experiment with ideas, and when you are satisfied, the software builds a sequence based on your graphical arrangement. Storyboard editing is one of my favorite ways to start assembling a sequence or even several sequences concurrently. And when it comes to this approach, Avid Media Composer offers more flexibility than any other software to date. I invite you to join us as we dive into the fun and highly creative world of storyboard editing. Okay, here we are in the default edit workspace of Avid Media Composer. I am currently in the process of reviewing some footage that was shot in Alaska this past summer. Within bins, we have three ways to view our material. Text view, which is what we are looking at right now. Script view, which displays a thumbnail for each clip, some metadata to the right, and this large text field for your comments and notes about each clip. But for this tutorial, we will be working in frame view. This view also displays a thumbnail representing each clip or subclip, but unlike any other view, frame view allows us to freely rearrange our clips without being limited to a rigid grid system. To make better use of this feature, let's first give ourselves a larger canvas to work with. To do that, we will start by creating a new custom workspace. In the workspace bar, click the small triangle and select new workspace. I will name it Storyboard. To maximize our screen real estate, right-click anywhere in the workspace bar and select Hide. If you need to get back to other workspaces or create new ones, you can do so with the new icon in the top right corner of Avid's interface. Or by way of the menu system, Windows, Workspaces. Of course, you can arrange this storyboard workspace however you would like, but here's a suggestion that works well for me. Click and drag the Composer window down and to the right of the timeline. Make sure the target area turns white by hovering directly over the green edge. Release the mouse, and you instantly have a much wider canvas to start dragging and dropping your clips within the bin. The concept of storyboard editing is quite simple. Select the clips or subclips that you would like to use and arrange the frames in the order you would like them to appear in your sequence, left to right, just like in a timeline. If you need more horizontal space, create a second row where the sequence will continue, again, left to right. I find this to be a very effective technique for working out visual narratives for a wide variety of projects. Trailers, music videos, highlight reels, anything with strong and diverse images to build from. We are truly only limited by our own creativity, imagination, and willingness to put those talents to work. Before sending this storyboard into a proper timeline, a couple of tips for controlling the arrangement of your clips, and therefore helping you construct better storyboards. First, if your clips are arranged something like this, Depending on the number of clips in your bin, you might find it difficult to find enough space to arrange your sequences effectively. Here is an easy fix. First, let's open our sequences bin, and then dock it to the left of our camera media bin. Like before, click, drag, and drop when you hover over the green edge and see white. Then click and drag the border to about the width that you would like your source clips to be confined to. Right-click anywhere in the bin and select Fill 
sorted. This will neatly arrange your clips in the order they are sorted according to the bin's text view, which of course you can control, much like a spreadsheet. Then readjust the border to give yourself as much working space as you would like. Personally, I find this arrangement much easier to work with when selecting clips for a sequence. If it bothers you that the storyboard clips are not perfectly aligned with one another, select them, right click, and choose Align and Fill, Align Selected to Grid. Sometimes when I'm working on ideas on how a sequence might flow, I intentionally keep the alignment a bit off. This serves as a visual reminder to myself that this sequence still needs some work. Once I feel the storyboard is ready to commit to a timeline, then I will neatly align the frames to grid. This can be especially helpful if you are building several sequences across one or more bins. Imperfect alignments can serve as visual status notes. Of course, none of this is required by Avid for storyboard editing to function, but it can be helpful to you as the editor. Now you may have noticed the bin map over to the right. Like any good map, it provides a high-level overview of your bin's content to help you navigate around large, complex arrangements. Click and drag within the bin map, and your view of the actual bin will adjust accordingly. If I give myself enough space to work, I generally find this new feature to be quite helpful. But if the bin map is getting in your way, you can easily hide it by right-clicking anywhere in the bin and selecting Hide bin map. To bring it back, right click again and select Show bin map. Sometimes when working on a storyboard layout, you may want to zoom in or out of your layout. You can zoom in or enlarge the thumbnails with Control L on Windows or Command L on Mac OS. You can zoom out or shrink your thumbnails with Control K on Windows or Command K on Mac OS. Remember L for enlarge and K for shrink. There is also a slider in the upper right of the bin to control this zoom or scaling factor with the mouse. Notice how the bin map dynamically adjusts as we scale the thumbnails up and down. By default, the first frame of the clip will display as the thumbnail but sometimes the first frame does not represent the clip's content very well. If you would like to change the thumbnail, click it once and use any of the playback controls mapped to your keyboard. I generally find JKL to be the most useful because you can play in any direction and at a variety of speeds. Plus, if there is audio associated with the clip, you will hear that as well. Fill your pen with water. Start shaking it side to side and tilting it away from you. Remember to keep that angle. You can even change multiple thumbnails at the same time by selecting those clips and using the step forward and step backward commands. To better explain this, let me pull up Avid's keyboard mapping tool. This can be found in user settings. If you are using Avid's default keyboard layout, these functions are assigned to numbers 1 through 4. One steps back one third of a second. The exact number of frames will vary depending on the frame rate of your project. Two steps forward one third of a second. Three steps back one frame. And four steps forward one frame. For example, if you press the 2 key six times, you will advance all selected clips by two seconds. This can be extremely helpful if you are working with material that was slated during production. After shot numbers, takes, and any other pertinent information has been logged, you will probably prefer to see beyond the slate and into the content of the shots themselves. A good starting point is usually just before the director calls action. You can also use the home and end keys to quickly jump to the first or last frame of any number of clips simultaneously. When you need to see more than what even large thumbnails can provide, double click and like in any other bin view, the clip will load into the source monitor. 
From here, you can review the material and mark in and out points. I for in, O for out, and Avid will use these marks when you ask it to move your storyboard into a sequence. If a clip does not have any marks, then the entire clip, first frame to last frame, will be added to your sequence. Speaking of which, how do we convert this storyboard into a proper sequence living in a timeline? First, open or create the sequence where you want to send the clips. I will create a new sequence by right-clicking in our Sequences bin and selecting New Sequence. Let's call this 01 Selects Reel A. As the name implies, this is a method of selecting the best or most promising shots for the sequence that you are building. We know this new sequence is open because both the green source tracks and the blue record tracks now appear in the timeline. And just below the tracks, the name of the sequence, along with its basic formatting information, is displayed. The current sequence name also appears above the record monitor, just in case you need to double check that the clips are going into the correct sequence. Then, all you need to do is select the clips from your storyboard, drag the group into your sequence, release the mouse, and within seconds, Avid will build a sequence based on the storyboard you designed. With our Selects Reel built, we are in a good position to start refining our sequence into an assembly or rough cut. Trimming is another one of Avid's great strengths, but also a very extensive topic into itself, so we will save that for future tutorials. If you found this tutorial helpful, please let us know in the comments and smash that like button. You can also reach out to us on social media, links to our accounts can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you the very best with all of your post-production projects.